Hi, Aisha Fermanski here with beegeducation.com and I am gonna show you this super cool technique called tab set pendant. Have you been at your local gem show lately and you see all those beautiful cabochons but you don't quite know how to solder yet? This is a great way to set stones using no flame at all. If you're new to sawing, you're gonna to wanna to pop on over and check out my class called Sawing Your Own Metal Shapes. In that class, I go through the basics and beginner steps of using a jeweler's saw. This technique is really versatile because you can use any shape cabochon that you can find, even ones that have different thicknesses. So if you have a stone that has a slope, let's say it's heavier on one side than the other, you're just gonna make the tabs on that side longer than the ones on the short side. So if you do have a stone like that, make sure to really focus on my measuring step. Here are some of the tools that we're going to use in today's class. A bench pin, cut lube, jeweler's saw, size 2 aught saw blades, fine point permanent marker, caliper, masking tape, and packing tape, a needle file, a variety of sanding sticks, and a screw down hole punch. Plastic mallet, bench block, a variety of templates. These can be found at your local art supply store or office supply store. Hypo cement glue, flat nose plier, chain nose plier, and here are the materials. You're going to need flat back stones, these are all cabochons, some large jump rings, and this is 22 gauge copper, but you can use 22 or 24 gauge. You could also choose to use sterling silver or brass. The first step to designing your pendant is to adhere a little piece of masking tape, this little loop of masking tape, to the back of your stone and place it in the center of your sheet metal. You'll notice I have a lot of excess material here, but that's so I can build in my loop for my jump ring and each one of my tabs. Now that the stone is nice and stuck down, Take a fine point Sharpie marker and I'm going to trace the stone, being careful to trace very close to the cabochon. Just like that. Now that I have that, I'm going to remove the stone because I want to talk about the length of the tabs. I'm going to bring in a caliper, which is a really cool tool. Here it is. And I'm going to measure the thickness of this cabochon. So you just slide it open this way and then clamp it down. What I'm showing you here is you don't want your tab to be short like this, right? Because you'll fold it over and it won't keep your stone secure. It needs to be taller. So I want my tab to come this far up and over my cabochon. So let's see. Now we look over and that's five millimeters. I'm gonna put this down and show you. Can you see how this line matches up there? That's half of 10, five millimeters. So I'm going to take that measurement, 5 millimeters, and I'm going to add about 2 to 3 millimeters to take into consideration the thickness of the material, but also that when the tab comes up and over, we may have a little bit of space between the stone and the tab that we need to take into consideration. So my magic number here is 7 to 8 millimeters for my tabs. So let's bring the metal back in here. I'm going to use an oval template. You can see it here to create my tabs. I'm going to pick 
These long skinny ones I really like over here. Get this lined up so you can see. For this pendant, I'm gonna have four tabs. Because it's nice and oval, it'll be easy to have a really balanced design. I'm gonna do a tab here, 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 and here with a top loop at the top. Take my template, and I'm gonna use number 11 there. I'm gonna use my caliper again. I'm gonna take it and move it to eight. Why not, we'll be generous. And my little oval there. Normally I just eyeball this, but let's make a mark right on the template. So that's about eight millimeters in. So I take that template, lay it down, draw in my tab, just like that. Now I'm gonna rotate and do the bottom left tab. My eight millimeter mark is lined up with the edge. Moving over to my top right tab, placing that eight millimeter mark, eyeballing it with the top left. These don't have to be perfect. Close is good enough with this. When you when you have four tabs, you just you have a little bit more wiggle room. I'll show you later a design with three. When you have less than four, you need to be a little bit more careful where they go. All right, so there we have our four tabs. So let's add the top circle for our hole for our jump ring. Bring the template back in here. I like these little these little fat ovals. I'm just gonna place it on the top here. Just using a portion. Just like that. I have covered the design with packing tape. This prevents the ink from rubbing away while we're working because the oil's in our hands lots of times. While you're working on this side and you're sawing on this side, you're actually wiping away your uh, permanent marker. So that's just a little trick that I do covering that, that surface with packing tape. You've also probably noticed I am now using a bench pin. These are super handy. They just clamp onto the edge of your table. Take them with you anywhere you want want to go. So let's saw out our pendant. I am going to cut and saw on the interior line of our circumference and the exterior line of our tabs. And the reason that is is because later when we set the stone we don't want excess material around the edge of the stone. That's why we're gonna saw on the inside of this line. And the tabs we're gonna saw on the outside because we do want all of that material. I know it's a little tricky, but trust me, it, it really does make for a well-balanced pendant. So let's get sawing. on the inside of that Sharpie marker. Now when I meet the tab, 
saw in place while you rotate your blade. And now remember, I'm staying on the outside of this Sharpie marker. back to my main line, crossing it, sewing on the inside. Now continue like this all the way around. I've finished sawing. It's looking pretty good. You may have noticed I have removed the tape there. We have some sharp edges and burrs and things we need to take care of. I'm gonna use a needle file to do that. I hold the piece on its side, and what I do is, I call, I call it knocking off, but you just lightly run your needle file just over the edge of the metal here. And we're gonna do this all the way around and around each one of the tabs. Filing in the proper direction from the tip of the file downwards. This is softening the edges. It is leaving file marks, but that's okay. We're gonna follow this up with a little sanding. All right, all filed. So I did all the way around on the back side and the front side. So make sure you hit all angles front and back. Then I'm gonna move on to sanding. This is a sanding stick. I start with a, a medium grit. And you're gonna do the same, you're gonna take the same path and soften up all of those edges. I like the sanding stick because I feel like it's nice and because it's straight you can Get your angle exactly as you want it. You can, of course, just use regular sanding paper as well. Just work in this fashion all the way around, front and back and then we'll be right back. All right, switching to a finer grit. I'm gonna go all the way around one more time, and then we're gonna call it done. Oh yeah, that looks good. There we go, nice, shiny, smooth edge. One of the most interesting parts about this design is that you have all of the surface on the back of the pendant to play with. I'm gonna bring in a, another pendant, this pretty turquoise piece. So on the back of this one, you can see I stamped, I will live sincerely. And then I use the Beducation dandelion and fluff stamp there. But you can also remove the metal so on this one, see the back of the cabochon? It's really pretty. And it'd be nice to be able to see it when you flip the pendant over. I'm going to use a disc cutter to punch out a circle on the back of the pendant. 
So I'm just gonna take the punches and lay them out here to see which size I want. That one feels a little small. I'm gonna go up to the 7 8 inch and see how that looks. That looks pretty good. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna punch out a circle in the center of the pendant and then do a little stamping on the top and the bottom. I think that'll be nice. I'm gonna trace the punch with my fine point permanent marker. This is gonna help me align the punch when I slide the metal into the disc cutter. And remember, this is just optional. Lots of other things you could do, play around with it. Doesn't even matter that it's not complete. All right, let's lift the two plates apart. Slide your pendant in. I know your beloved pendant, you just spent all this time sawing it and sanding it. it might be a little nerve wracking to do this, but it's okay. Using those, your, your um, circle that you traced as your guideline screw the disc cutter down so it's nice and secure. I like to take cut lube and my cutter, run the edge of it through. Just like that. And then I'm going to hit with a one pound mallet very, very firmly. Now you have a little blank you can do something with. Release the two plates. Slide your pendant out. Now we have this nice circle, so when we set the stone, you'll be able to see. Isn't that nice? Next up, I'm gonna add some stamping. Adding design stamps and lettering to pieces makes them so much cooler. So let's add this pretty design stamp to this piece. I'm gonna straight, I'm gonna add it here, stick it on the top and the bottom. I think it'll be a nice little framing. Place my stamp. And with my one pound brass mallet, I'm just gonna flip this around. That looks great. Let's add the hole for the jump ring. Use my Sharpie marker once again to place a dot where I want the hole to be. This gives me a little target. Sharpies don't want to mark shiny metal sometimes, so you have to get them started on a piece of paper. There we go. I'm gonna use a screw down hole punch and I'm gonna use the smaller end of the two with the silver bar here. What I do is I place the piece into the tool and I slowly begin to rotate. Let's see if I can get you to see this. Here we go. Rotate the pin down, eyeballing that dot. And then just when it's clamped, I stop and I check. Check your angle, see if it's centered. I'm actually a hair to the left, so I'm gonna unscrew it and move it over a little bit. All right, that looks good. Now I'm going to turn the punch, allowing the pin to punch through the metal. As soon as it starts to loosen up, back out. 
As you back out, I let it swing and hold it and then let it back out. Just like that. Next up, I'm gonna liver of sulfur the piece, polish it all up, and then we're gonna set the stone. All right, I've liver of sulfur the piece. You can see the darkness there in the stamped impressions. Stamping these pieces is super fun, which I keep saying, but it's because it really, really is. You could also stamp the tabs, right? Put a little design out there, that would be super cute. While I was polishing the surface with very, very fine steel wool, it's the 0000 steel wool, I noticed that the piece is just a little warped from stamping, and that's gonna work against us when we set the stone. So I'm gonna bring in the bench block and my plastic mallet, and I'm just gonna flatten it out. There we go, nice and flat. All right, let's start the steps to setting the stone. All right, you're gonna take a flat nose pliers. It's important that it's flat. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn all of the tabs up to the sky at 90 degrees. So you're gonna come in and I want you to align the edge of the flat nose with this exterior line of your piece, just like that. And crank it upwards. Come back in, nice sharp, 90 degrees. Next tab. Make sure you're nice and lined up. All right, so those are the first movements for adjusting those tabs. The next thing we're gonna do, and it's not necessary, but I like to do it, I'm gonna add a little bit of glue to this area and this area. The tabs will keep the stone in place. It's not necessary, but it will naturally have a little bit of wiggle, and I don't really like the wiggle. So this is just to tack it down. Use a little bit of hypo cement. Make sure you don't use too much. You don't want to ooze out when you place your stone on the pendant there. Place my stone. Now regularly, I would uh, let this dry, um, just put it aside for 20 minutes and come back and then set the tabs. It's not necessary though, so I'm gonna do it while the glue is drying. The nice part about this kind of setting is that you don't need a fancy bezel rocker or any kind of equipment to push these tabs over. You can use any kind of small wood end. So this is the wood end of a sanding stick or this is the wedge to a ring clamp, which is what I'm going to use. And you simply take your little piece of wood, supporting it, the piece, you're just gonna slowly push the tab down. Now, I'm not gonna go all the way yet. I'm gonna just do small movements, and I'm gonna work this point and then I'm gonna go diagonal. This will prevent the stone from sitting lopsided.
You can see the stones slipping around a little bit, but that's all right. Now I'm going to come back around to my original and keep working. Slowly rocking that tab so it's laying on top of the stone. So now what I'm going to do is, I just made a little adjustment there. I was just adjusting the cab to make sure it's centered in the piece. I'm actually going to put this aside and let it dry because you saw it was moving around a little bit. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to really force them down. So let's do that. Let's finish setting this stone. Rocking the wood wedge up and over. I'm using wood so I'm not going to damage the stone. You know you're finished when you pick up the stone and you look this way and the tab is laying completely against the stone. This one we have some space, so let's work on that one. That one as well. Okay, so the top two are tight, the bottom two are loose. I'm going to bring in the sanding stick end here. There we go. Bingo. That glue continues to dry, so it just moved a little bit. I'm just nudging it into position. All right, let's add a jump ring. Grab both sides. Either side of the seam, swivel open, hook on your pendant, grab either side of that seam again, swivel closed. There we go. Beautiful tab set pendant with some beautiful detail in the back. Thanks for watching my class here on YouTube. And if you haven't already liked my class, make sure to click the little button below. And make sure to subscribe to our channel because we always have tons of videos coming out all the time.